Okay, we're going to start with retaining walls. So what's a retaining wall? In the simplest uh, sense, a retaining wall is a structural system that is used to create a vertical slope where perhaps there used to be a slanted slope. Okay, so this is the ground surface here like this. And what we want is to create a vertical slope. So in this particular example, what we do is fill the back of the wall, meaning in this case, we could construct the wall and then fill the back of it. Okay, so as to extend this side of the site, so as to, for example, have more space. This could be the backyard of a house or something like that, that somebody wants extended. Okay, so the question is, how do we design such a system? You can imagine that one possibility for failure is for the wall to overturn, that is rotate out and fall over like this, right? That of course is something we don't want, so we have to design against that, and we'll get to that later on. This, uh, this fill that we put back here is actually called the back fill. Some people call it the backfill soil, and others call it simply the backfill, okay? There are generally two types of walls. Cantilever, gravity, okay? And so a cantilever gravity wall is one that has, this is an exaggeration of, in terms of thickness and height, but I wanna show you, sorry, Basically, what it means is that you have, could be something like that. You have a system like this, and the footing provides a support. How? The footing has a large weight. Therefore, the weight of the footing prevents the wall from, for example, overturning. Okay? So does the soil behind what's called the heel. Of the footing so the soil back here rests on the top of the hill right and therefore provides additional support against that rotation or possible rotation of the wall that's called the gravity wall okay so this is a cantilever gravity wall there's another type of wall which looks like this generally very slender relative to how deep they are so here's the backfill, and here is what's called the mud line, which I failed to um, tell you what this side of the of the wall uh, is termed. The mud line is the ground surface on the toe side of the wall. Okay, so here's the mud line. Here's the backfill for this wall. Oh, this is the backfill, right? So in this case, what happens is the following. This is called a submerged wall. So a submerged wall is one where the wall is submerged into the soil such that support is provided by the soil acting essentially on both sides of the submerged portion of the wall. So you can imagine that if this wall were submerged quite a lot, okay, even beyond the page here, then it would be more difficult to have the wall rotate out versus the case where the wall is basically submerged only up to here, let's say. If the wall were just from here to here, then there would be very little support against this rotation and the wall could fail. So the question in this case is, how deep should the wall be? The question in this case is, how heavy or thick should the stem, this is called the stem, or end, sorry, how heavy or thick should the footing be? And how far back should the heel be or go, such that more backfill is laying on on it, providing a counter moment to this moment, which is the rotating moment that is going to want to cause the failure of the wall. 
So we want to avoid that, obviously. Okay? So these are two types of walls, cantilever gravity and submerged wall. All right. Now, later on, we're going to uh, talk about what are called tiebacks, which means that if you have a wall, for example, cantilever gravity, and you want to make it more stable, increase the factor of safety uh, against, for example, a rotating failure, then, which is called an overturning failure, you'll uh, learn more about that later. One way to prevent that, obviously, is to increase the length of the heel, increase the thickness of the footing, increase the thickness of the stem. And you can imagine doing those three things uh, is costly because you have more material, more excavation, etc. So one way to make it, let's say, less, less expensive, more efficient in most cases, is to tie back the wall, which means that you basically place a cable or it could be a rebar or it could be another system that actually ties, pulls the wall back. This is anchored into the ground actually and therefore this can this uh, tension can be imposed on this cable or, or rebar or group of rebar or group of cables so as to tie, that's called a tie back, tie the wall into the soil. It's an interesting way to do it and we'll discuss it later on but that's called a tieback wall. The same thing, or, or uh, this is a cantilever gravity wall that has been tied back, okay? The same thing can be done to a submerged wall. Okay? And as you can imagine, these are cross sections of the walls, right? These walls extend, this wall or walls extend into the page quite long more than their height okay and out the page so this is the this is what allows us to deal with walls in a two-dimensional as two-dimensional systems as you will learn uh, later when we start calculations so what you can imagine here is that if you are standing in front of the wall for example here right and you're looking that way then what you would see here's the wall right here's a tree so here's the tree over here. So you're standing in front of the wall looking at it, right? You're standing here looking at the wall like that, right? So what you would see are rows of tiebacks. This is a single tieback, maybe that one, okay? But so here, here's a tieback, right? And it may be that one, the one I'm showing here. What you have are rows and they're spaced a distance apart, S, etc. Okay? And they, they are located at a certain height, height one, height two, above the mod line on which you are standing, if you are here. Okay? okay, so this is just more like generic information so that you can have a sense of where we're going.